Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Carly, it's cleaning day. Hey guys, welcome back to CNC Reptiles. I'm Chris. I'm Carly. And today we're doing our second uh, routine video in our Ball Python Care uh, series. So, um, unfortunately, every now and again, we actually do have to clean our tubs out. And so what we were going to do is just kind of take you along the, uh, the entire journey of, of kind of how we clean and, um, and when we clean and all that. So uh, ultimately, guys, what we do, cleaning doesn't just begin on cleaning day. Uh, we do have one day uh, a month usually uh, when we'll go in and we'll clean all the tubs. So we'll pull it all out, uh, we'll wash them uh, with hot soapy water, um, get new reptic chip, we'll wash down all the hides, do all of that, um, and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll put the snakes back in. So that's what today is. Um, but again, that doesn't, uh, cleaning doesn't just start today. So we'll take you through the whole process. Uh, what we look for, kind of our observations, as we talked about in the first video, um, our observations that we're, uh, that we're trying to see as we go along the, uh, the different days when we clean, and especially on the day uh, that we do our, our deep clean. So uh, um, let's take a look over here. So what we're gonna do, guys, and you can see kind of behind Carly here. Uh, here right here, we've got the, uh, uh, we've got the young ones uh, over here. So this is Angel and Peanut and Kalahari. And over here behind Carly, we've got the uh, the bigger two. So we've got Cutie and uh, Bubbles over here. So we're gonna get set up and we'll show you a little bit about what we do. See you. All right, guys, so here we go. So we've got our first tub out. So I thought I'd show you um, at least uh, both uh, kinds of tubs that we have right now. So currently we have a couple of snakes that are just on paper towel. Um, so really not a whole lot uh, to change here. And in fact, these girls, um, so we have Kalahari and we have uh, Angel that are uh, still on paper towels. And so it, it's actually pretty easy, right? The, when, we, when we come to clean, um, all we're going to do is change out the paper towels. So we can take this. Now, I actually just changed these uh, a couple of days ago. And typically when they're on paper towels, um, we only really change them if they, uh, if they happen to go to the bathroom. Um, but what we do with everybody on cleaning day is everybody gets new water um, and we scrub down the uh, scrub down all the bowls and they get new water and we scrub down the hides if we uh, if we need to. So let's go ahead and take a look at Kalahari. She's going to be a little bit a little bit scared. She may give us a hiss, but this is our new girl Kalahari. She is absolutely beautiful. Um, our desert ghost female. I'm still not quite used to being handled just yet. So we're not going to mess with her just too much. Just set her back down here. Let her go back, uh, come back in the hide there, sweetheart. All right, there we go. So um, now I did mention before uh, that, that cleaning day actually starts before the actual cleaning day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out one of our bigger tubs and kind of give you an idea of so here is one of our, our bigger tubs. So let's just talk a little bit about cleaning um, kind of throughout the week, uh, for lack of a better term. So uh, I actually check every single tub a minimum of three times a day. So usually when I get up and get ready, uh, get ready for work, say around 6 to 6.30 in the morning, I come in and I just take a look. Uh, whenever I get home in, in mid-afternoon, I'll come back in and take a look. And then right before I go to bed, I will take a look. And so um, what, what am I looking for, right? So obviously I'm coming in just to see if anything looks different, right? Have they pooped? Have they peed? Um, or is the tub clean? So in general, this one right now is, is pretty clean, right? There's not, you don't see any visible uh, poop. You don't see any visible urates or anything like that. What we do know that we're doing though, is we're, we're taking everything out and we will give it an absolute deep clean today. So what I have actually found that we have to do, so this, this Repti chip is actually a month old and it's actually still really good since we have to keep our Repti chip fairly dry um, because of our, our humid environment. The Repti chip doesn't quite break down um, as, as much as it might in, uh, in some of the other environments where they're having to constantly keep it wet. Um, but this is actually Cutie. This is our piebald female. This is her tub. And so today everything is getting a deep clean, right? So on the other day, so the other Saturdays, Saturdays is typically the, uh, 
the overall clean day, right? On, on the days throughout the week that we're, not, uh, that we're not cleaning. And what I'll actually do is I'll come in I'll, and I'll take it and I'll just move everything around. And the reason that I do that is first off, um, it was actually Cutie that I found, but she had actually uh, gone to the bathroom and covered it back up with the rep chip. It was actually right up here in the front. She'd covered it back up with the rep chip and it does such a good job of masking odors that I didn't know that she had gone to the bathroom. And so it stayed there for, uh, it stayed there all week. Um, and then I finally found it one day and obviously had to clean it, right? So what we do is we'll come in and I'll, and I'll move all the Repti chip every Saturday. Just move it around, add more if I need to add more. Obviously if I find poop or if I find pee, um, I'll, I'll remove that. And guys, just a, a little quick tip. These, these are little uh, dog bags, you know, when you take your dog out to uh, go to the restroom or take your dog out for a walk, I should say, and go to the bathroom, that's what these are. These are invaluable, guys, for a quick pickup. Like if I find something on a, on a Wednesday morning right before I go to work, take one of these out, boom, I pull it out and it's done, right? Um, so very, very invaluable. I actually saw this over on, uh, I believe it was Predator BP's channel. So go check him out too. But uh, a really good tip, these little dog uh, poop bags uh, really help as you're cleaning out your snakes throughout the week. Um, but anyway, so back to that. So I'll go through, I'll just move all of this around. The main reason is I usually keep the water dish up here in the front where you saw it. Um, if they spill water, it's going to be on this Repti chip up here. So I like to move it around just to give it a uh, uh, get some dry and, and, and move the wet um, from just being in one corner, okay? Now you can see this girl, she's, she was happily sleeping and so she's probably not real happy at me that I'm waking her up. But um, it's actually pretty clean. She, uh, tomorrow is actually feeding day, so she's probably going to, uh, probably gonna go to the bathroom here in a couple of days or so, um, which usually happens, right? She'll usually go to the bathroom after I clean her tub. And there's a little urate right there, right? But uh, that's kind of what you're looking for, guys, as you're moving stuff around. But today, we'll actually dump all of this out. I'll take this upstairs and give it uh, a good scrub down with uh, soapy water, as well as everything that goes in the in the tub with her. So her little, uh, both her logs and her hide. Okay, guys. So um, we actually have kind of changed some things that we've that we have done uh, when we clean. So we actually used to wash this at the kitchen sink. Um, and I would caution you guys against this. So although I don't think <laughs> that my snakes have salmonella, snakes can certainly carry salmonella. And so we actually have moved to the bathroom. So what we did is um, just one of the bathrooms that we have upstairs doesn't get used a ton. Um, and so we come in here. Uh, what I do is I just kind of use the tub as the basin. So you can see I've removed all the Repti chip. I've removed the, uh, the uh, hygrometer and, uh, therm and thermometer that I have and I've got all of Cutie stuff in here. So all I do, I get the water as hot as we can possibly get it, a little bit of Dawn, and I'm gonna let everything soak for a minute and then just scrub it down really well. Um, I've actually got a little kit, so I'll show you that uh, here in just a second. Um, but I've got a, just a little kit that's got uh, a scrub brush, it's got some sponges, so I can get everything scrubbed down really, really well. After we do that, we'll just dry it off, we'll get some more Repti chip, and then we'll be cleaned. So. Uh, uh, not going to make you sit through watching all of that, but uh, that's kind of the process that we do there. So uh, we'll come back as soon as we have it done. So um, we've got everything washed, so it's nice and clean. So uh, and you really have to you really have to pay attention, guys, because especially if you get some urate or something uh, back here where the heating spot or the heating uh, heating tape is, it can really really kind of cake on, and, and you got to really scrub uh, hard to get it off. But um, I'm letting everything kind of dry. So these ceramic. Um, uh, hides and, uh, and logs that I've got in the cages. It takes them a little bit of time uh, to, actually, um, to actually dry. So I just kind of let them air dry a little bit. I'll wipe off all the major water, let them air dry for about five to 10 minutes before I actually put them back in. But what I'm actually doing now, guys, is taking advantage um, of cleaning day. Uh, what I've noticed, so again, in observation, so as I've told you, in everything that you do with your snakes, um, you really, really have to observe what's going on. I've noticed on the bottom uh, on the bottom rack or the bottom spot where Cutie's at in this bigger tub, um, it runs a little warmer and the humidity runs a little higher. And I think it's because it's a closer gap than what's on the top. And I'll show you when we get back out to the, uh, out to the snake room. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna use this, uh, this soldering iron here and I'm just gonna put some holes along the side. And so, um, you know, I've seen different things where people have tried to drill them, but the soldering iron tends to, uh, uh, it makes a little bit cleaner, um, 
cleaner hole through the plastic, doesn't give sharp edges, and then you also don't have a uh, uh, have the tendency of cracking the plastic like you could with um, like you could with a drill. And so what we're going to do is, and I don't know if you can see it very well, the lighting is terrible in here, but underneath the lip there are just a few uh, uh, a few little braces here for the lip back to the back to the tub itself. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the soldering iron and I'm gonna place probably, uh, I think we'll probably start out with four. Um, so I'll just show you kind of how easy this is. So if I don't know if you can really get this or not, but. So we got the soldering iron, it's nice and hot and bam, see? Nice even hole there. You don't really have to worry about, uh, have to worry about cracking the plastic. And once it actually once it actually uh, uh, cools off, it's nice and, uh, and blunt. So there's no real sharp edges. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with four on this side, and then I'm gonna put four um, over here on the other side as well. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, guys. And again, I'm hoping it just helps me kind of control the humidity and control the, uh, uh, the temperature a little better. It tends to get a little hotter in this tub and for sure is a little bit more humid. So I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll head back down to the snake room and finish up. So one of the things I thought I would share with you, um, like I said, we really have um, just an issue with humidity um, here in Southeast Texas. And so what I actually have to do to prepare my reptichip um, I just went and got one of these big totes, uh, and I only have to use about a half a block of Reptichip at a time. It's really kind of overkill for me to use a full block um, at this point. And so what I'll do is I'll get it in here, and I'll, uh, I'll water it down some, and then I will leave this open under a fan for about a week and let this really, really dry out. And about the only time I ever add humidity back to this is right after I put it... Uh, uh, put it back into the tub. I'll spray it down just ever so slightly, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, but just thought I would share with you just kind of something that we have to do here. Because uh, if I put a uh, wet, really wet Reptichip into the tub with the snakes, holy cow, man, it just, the humidity is 99% right off, right off the bat. So, uh, so let's get some Reptichip in the tub and, uh, and we'll finish up the process. All right, guys, so here we go. Kind of the final product, right? So I've added the Reptichip. Uh, back into the tub now. Uh, obviously I leave a little space here so I can put my water dish back in. I actually like to leave a space here in the back. You can see I don't have the hide or the uh, uh, the logs back in here just yet. They're not quite dried out. Um, so uh, so we'll, we'll let those dry out a little bit more. And I actually like um, for the snake, I, I go ahead and just kind of leave a spot here so they have direct heat uh, where the heat mat or the heat tape is. Um, so I'll place the hide over here and then the hides back in. So like I said, this is about the only time that I ever actually add um, any type of water to the Reptichip. The only other time I might do it is if I know that they're going into shed. So just to up the humidity slightly, but I'll just give it literally guys, that's it. Just enough to kind of, just enough to kind of moisten it. I, I do not want it wet. I do not want it uh, uh, spiking the humidity in there. So hopefully, and uh, let's see, I can show you here. So I've got the holes. I think you can kind of see. Nope, you probably can't. Um, let me see if I do it this way. Yeah, right here. So you can see the holes right here, right? So I've got four holes here to start. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know if that will be enough. Um, it may, it may not. And if it's not, I can go down the entire side uh, of both sides. And obviously that will let more airflow in um, when you do that. So the last thing to do uh, before adding Miss Cutie back in is obviously you want to give her plenty of water. So we uh, we load the bowl back up here with water. And this is just room temperature water, guys. Don't necessarily do anything special with water. Um, and then we'll get uh, Cutie out of the little tub that I've got her in. Her sweet girl. So what I do, guys, since I don't have um, excess tubs right now, and that was actually part of uh, bad planning on my part, to be quite honest. Um, I should have more of these same tubs, but uh, but I don't. And I've tried to get some, and they're uh, they're on back order right now, so you can't really get them. Um, so hopefully, I'll have some here pretty quickly. But it sure would be nice to just have one of these set up so I could put her in, and um, and. Uh, you know, put her in a new one and, and clean the old one. But what I did, I do have an extra one of these, these little tubs here. And so I just set her in that for now um, so that she can uh, she can sit in there for the you know, 10, 15 minutes it takes me to clean it. But I've got everything set back up. So I'm gonna get her back in the rack 
And uh, basically, guys, now it's just rinse and repeat for as many <laughs> as many tubs as you need to do. So, uh, so we'll uh, we're gonna do that, and then we'll. Okay, guys. So I thought I would uh, I would share with you finished product here for uh, for uh, Cutie. So. Um, we went ahead and got the, the hide back in and both logs back in, obviously a full water dish. And the reason I thought that I would share this is because it gives me a chance to share one of the observations that as I've gone through and kind of spot cleaning and, and different things, what I've noticed with Cutie, she actually likes to hang out back here behind the hide sometimes, right? What I actually used to do is push this all the way up against the back and all the way up against the corner. And what I found is she would move it because she, there's a temperature back here, a temperature gradient that she really likes. And so while she does spend quite a bit of time inside the hide, she really likes to hang out back here. And then sometimes she'll move this over and just kind of be right in this area here. So again, guys, why it's really important to observe your snakes, uh, to be going into the enclosure multiple times per day to kind of see different things that they're going to teach you. And guys, they'll teach you a lot if you'll just be willing to learn. So, uh, so okay, guys. So that's the end of this. So we'll go when. Uh, and all right, guys. So that uh, that's cleaning day. All right. So uh, all in all, it took us about uh, it takes us about an hour to get through uh, to get through all five tubs. Um, really, probably would go a lot lot quicker if um, if I had some extra tubs that I could go ahead and just have set up, move the snakes over, and then clean everything all at once, as opposed to having to kind of clean one at a time uh, to a certain extent. So I've got some of the, uh, I've got some of the smaller tubs actually on order so I can do that. Um, uh, and then like I said though, these bigger tubs over here, and guys, this is uh, all the better reason to make sure that you're prepared. Um, and this was just kind of a miss on my part, uh, but these bigger tubs you can't get right now. They're, they're out of stock everywhere. And so uh, I think the one place I found them was in Canada and it actually cost me more to ship them to me than to, uh, than to actually buy the tubs. So, uh, so we'll opt to, uh, to wait. I think it's about a four week wait and there might be some more that I can get. So um, as you can see, I lost Carly, uh, my partner in crime here. She, uh, she gets a little weary at the end of cleaning day. And so uh, in lieu of her fun fact for the day, I'm gonna give you kind of the best tip. So get guys just something, especially if you're a hobbyist breeder, guys, um, not something where you're gonna be able to set up uh, maybe a, an entire room, have a dedicated sink and stuff like that. Uh, guys, just get like a little shower caddy almost, right? So all I've got in here is I've got a big brush, I've got a nice little scrubber, got some Dawn, um, I had a smaller sponge in there as well. But ultimately, guys, that will help you, um, uh, help you just kind of keep it all in one spot. Uh, that way when you actually do go and, and uh, need to clean, makes it pretty easy. So, uh, so again, guys, I really appreciate you coming along and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.